I'm sure you would have noticed that when we sit down even for a few, few minutes to listen to Kirtan, to do Nithanem, or to sit and do Naam Simran, that it doesn't take very long for the mind to get distracted. And one of the most common complaints, feedbacks, and frustrations that we feel is Kimira Manni Tikda. And because we have found Naam Simran difficult in the past, because we find our mind to be so distracting, sometimes we may find that it's off putting that we don't feel like doing that again. But it isn't that when you sit down and do Naam Simran, your mind doesn't stay still. It's that when you sit down and do Naam Simran, you first come to realize how busy your mind always is. So today I'd like to share with you some of my personal thoughts based on whatever understanding Guru has allowed me to have on what can we do to help ourselves and what are we trying to do with Naam Simran. When we sit and do Naam Simran on, the first difficulty we find is that our mind seems to be talking very loud. Our mind seems to go all over the place. The second distraction, the, se the second difficulty that we find is when we're doing Naam Simran, we're not told or we're not sure what should we be focusing on? What are we supposed to be doing with our minds? What are we looking for? When we're sitting in Naam Simran, what are we trying to achieve? So it's only when we sit and do vichar on these things can it help when we actually sit down and do the Naam Simran, then we have a little bit of understanding as to how we can try and achieve this. We also find that as well as being distracted by thoughts, we're also distracted by our body itself. You may notice that when you sit down to do Naam Simran, you start, suddenly start becoming aware of different parts of your body. Maybe different parts of your body will feel uncomfortable. Maybe you feel an itch somewhere. So all of a sudden your body seems like it's woken up and it's trying to get your attention. I want you just to compare this with another time in your life when you don't feel this distracted but you're still sitting down for a couple of hours. When we sit and do Naam Simran, it doesn't even take one or two minutes and our mind starts to convince us that this is too difficult. If you sit down to watch TV or watch a movie, have you noticed that your mind is able to stay focused? You don't get distracted, you don't think about your body. And I'm not interested in blaming anyone. I'm not trying to make you feel any better or worse. It's about trying to understand why does my mind co focus on this, but my mind seems to get very bored very quickly. I don't know about you, but sometimes you may have noticed that if you're sitting and doing part, or if you're listening to Gurbani, within about three or four minutes, you start yawning quite a lot. What is your mind doing? Your mind is trying to shut down. I certainly had those experiences at school and at university when the teacher started talking, you start feeling really sleepy. And we see the same thing when we sit down to listen to Gurbani or Paat. We don't see the same thing when we're listening to music or when we're watching TV. So we have to understand what is our mind attracted by and what is our mind distracted by. Let's think of another example. If you go out into nature, Maybe you go into some beautiful countryside. If you come across a mountain or a lake, or maybe if you're looking up at the stars on a clear night, have you noticed your mind can stay still? You can just watch the stars. What's happening? There are certain things that captivate the mind. 
But you have already noticed in yourself that there are certain times when the mind can be completely silent. Why is it that you can look at countryside nature? Why is it that you can look at the stars and you can just keep looking? You don't have a thought in your mind. You don't compare the stars to anything else. You just are able to look. So by looking at these two or three examples, we see that the mind needs something. The mind needs something to hold on to. And for this, the Guru has given us mantar. The Guru has given us Shabad, the Guru has given us something using sound. One of the common questions that I get asked is, am I allowed to think of a photo of the Guru? Sometimes if we're doing Nam Simran, we might have an image of Guru Nanak. But the Guru's instruction is to listen to the sound of the Shabad itself. That's why we're using sound. What is Mantar? What is Nam? It's the use of sound. So your Tyan has to be listening to the sound of your own voice. Now what is Kirtan? Why was Kirtan written in Rags? Rags is also a very sophisticated sound. So Guru says that if you want to understand this Bani, if you want to understand the words, understand it through Rags. So Guru has specifically given us the technique of sound. So when we're sitting and doing Nam Simran, we must be putting our Tyan on the sound of our own voice. But the Guru has also given us words which are written in the common language. So as well as sound, Guru has also given us Shabads. So for example, the Guru hasn't just given you a sound. Like if I just play a piece of music, that's not Gurmat meditation because that's just listening to a sound. Guru has given us Shabad. Shabad means a word. So sound and word. So when we take a word like Vahe Guru or Ik Oankar, we must listen to the sound, put our awareness on the sound, but also on the meaning. So when we're saying Vahe Guru, we need to be thinking about the emotion. What is it feel? to say va we have to try and evoke that evo emotion we have to bring that experience of va wow or ik ankar again look o ankar that's a sound that's using sound for us to focus our awareness and by saying ikwankar we are understanding the wisdom that everything is part of that one we can call it universal sound or universal vibration so nam is specifically the use of sound and the wisdom the understanding of what the word actually means so what are we trying to do with nam this is a little bit about what the distractions are, why it feels difficult. But what are we actually trying to achieve? As I've understood it, Gurbani wants us to use the technique of Nam Simran to go within ourselves. Most of the time, when we do Nam Simran, we are looking outwards. And if you notice, when you sit still, your mind is always trying to think about something external. It's always got some external thing going on, some external, it could be something to do with your house, something to do with your work, your own responsibilities. It's always thinking about something external. Through Shabad, we're trying to go internal. And what we make the mistake of doing, because the mind is always looking outwards, in Nam Simran, one of the mistakes that we do is we think about God like it's outwards. That God is outside because everything else that our mind does is looks outside. So it thinks in Nam Simran that God is also outside. And so what we end up doing with Nam Simran is we create an idea that God is outside and we are calling God. What Nam Simran has become is God calling. The God that we think is outside is we're trying to call that God. So Nam Simran is not God calling because the God that you're calling isn't outside. 
So Naam Simran is the technique of going within yourself and rather than it being God calling, it is God realizing. Man tu jyot sarup hai apna mool pachan. Recognize that which is within you. Mool is that which is the very base of you, the very nature of what you are. Apna mool pachan hai. So this is what Gurmat is trying to do with the Naam Simran. We've talked about what are we trying to focus on. We're focusing on the sound. We're trying to understand the meaning of it, Vahe Guru. We're trying to actually think about that meaning. Not that we're trying to dissect the meaning. We're not trying to understand what is God at this point. We're just trying to evoke the feeling of Vah, Vahe Guru. Or Ik Onkar, God is everywhere, God is everywhere. Another Shabad, remember Gurbani gives you lots of mantras. Yeah, we sh I've always recommended that you should do the mantra that works for you. Gurbani gives us lots of mantar. Tuhi Tuhi is another mantar. Har Har, that's another mantar. Gurbani uses Har quite a lot as well. So I always recommend try one meditation with one mantar and then while you're learning, try a different mantar as well. The way I like to explain this is that if I was a swimming teacher and I had to teach you swimming. When you get into the swimming pool for the first time, you don't expect to swim to the other side on your first lesson. So in the same way, the first time you're doing Naam Simran or in the early stages of Naam Simran, don't expect to go all the way because we're learning. Secondly, if I'm a swimming teacher, I will teach you lots of different ways to swim. The forward stroke, the back stroke, I'll show you different ways to move your arms, different ways to move your legs. I won't do them all at the same time. The first lesson, you'll learn one, one technique. The next lesson, you'll learn a different technique. This is what different mantras does. Try different ones. So what you want to do is you want to get to the point where you are comfortable with lots of different techniques. So one day when I tell you to go into the swimming pool and I just tell you, go to the other side, what you will do is you will pick the one that is most comfortable to you, the one that works for you. You've tried all the different ones, but you found the one that's easiest for you. That's the one that gets you there the fastest. So in the same way, I encourage, try different mantras. Try doing them out loud, try doing them quietly. There's benefit in all of these things. The recommendation is certainly when you're starting to do Nam Simran, you start out loud. Because if we're trying to focus on the meaning of the sound and the actual sound of the voice, then it's easier when you're doing it out loud. As you get better at it, then you can do Nam Simran quietly. So we have to be comfortable with the fact that this is going to take some time. Don't expect that just because the first time you sit down and do Naam Simran, Mera man ne tikda, my mind is all over the place, that means Naam Simran works for everyone else, but it doesn't work for me. That's what we think. Somebody else may be able to do Naam Simran, but it doesn't work for my mind. So I'm just not going to try anymore. No. In the same way, just as you can't swim the first time you get into the pool, in the same way, don't expect to go very far. Reduce your expectations. Now, we also have to understand that if it is an internal journey, it means that there's something inside that we have to look for. What are we looking for inside? Remember, the mind is always looking outside. But the technique of Naam Simran is to go inside. Gurbani specifically talks about this as though you're going on a yatra. In the Guru's times, and even now, there is this idea that if you want to get spiritual blessings, you have to go to holy places. It's called Tirat. And by going to holy places, and especially swimming in those holy pools, that you will get some blessing. Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, I also go to holy places. I also go bathe in holy rivers. But my Tirat is internal. Tirat Navan Jao Tirath naam hai. Naam 
means I don't have to get up and go somewhere, I have to get up and go inside. I do go and bathe, but I bathe in the Tirath of Naam. Tirath Shabad Bichar Antar Gyan Hai. I use the wisdom of the Guru, the wisdom of the Shabad, remember what we talk about, trying to understand what the word is, and Antar Gyan, I try and understand that which is within me, internal wisdom. Tirath Shabad Bichar Antar Gyan Hai. The real Tirath, Guru Sahib is saying, is not to go to some holy places, visit holy temples, holy gurdwaras, bathe in holy rivers. The real Tirath is to go and understand that which is sacred within you. There is something holy inside you. But the technique we use is Naam and Shabad Bichar to get internal wisdom, to find something that is inside you. So what are some of the benefits of doing Naam Simran? Well, the first difficulty that I talked about, that the mind seems too loud, let's look, about, look, let's look at that as a benefit. The benefit of that is that we start to realize that the mind is working independently of me. Normally we say these are my thoughts. But when you sit down in Nam Simran, even if you sit down for one minute quietly, before you've even started Nam Simran, the thoughts are talking away and you want to keep them quiet, what that means is that you are not generating those thoughts. The thoughts just seem to be coming on their own. You're not the one making those thoughts happen. So the first benefit that you see by seeing your noisy mind is you realize the mind is different, I am something different. I can look at the mind. It's not a thought that's looking at the mind, I am looking at the mind. So, the first thing that you learn with Naam Simran is that you can actually detach yourself from the mind. Normally, when the mind gives you a thought, you say, yes, that's my thought. And whatever thought the mind gives you, you just jump on that thought. There's a very simple analogy to understand the mind and the thoughts. If you had to go to a different town that's far away and you decided to take the train, what do you do? You go to the train station, do you jump on the first train that arrives or do you wait for the train that's going to the town that you want to go to? You don't just jump on the first train that arrives. You stay on the platform, on the train station until the correct train comes along and try to think about your mind in the same way. Think about Nam Simran as staying on the platform and thoughts like lots of trains that are coming and going all the time. Through practice, you will learn to stay within yourself and not jump on every single thought. But because we haven't got that practice, most of the time, as soon as a thought comes into our mind, we jump on that th thought, we take it. And what happens, thoughts move so quickly that within a few seconds your thoughts have gone somewhere else. So you may sit there in your thoughts and a th sit there on the platform of your own mind, the train station, and a thought comes along that says, when I go home I need to do this. Yeah, that's a thought that can come into your mind. I need to make sure that I do the washing or I need to make sure that I've cleaned the dishes or the cooking is done for tomorrow. A thought comes. What we do is we jump on that thought. As soon as we jump on that thought, we say, oh, I also need to make sure I do this. And last time, my friend came to my house and I forgot to do it. And my friend who came to my, my house, last time they borrowed some money from me. And they haven't paid me that money back. And in fact, the last time my friend did that is when we were on holiday. Oh, I must remember to book the next holiday. But when we went on that holiday last time, I didn't enjoy it, so I have to go somewhere else. And that person and that holiday hotel was very rude to me. I can't believe what they said. Have you seen what's happened? You had one thought. Within about five or ten seconds, you're on holiday somewhere. 
What's happened? You jumped on the train and the train went. You have no control where that train is going. It's just going. That's because without acknowledging it, you jumped on the train. That is our natural response to jump on the train. Nam Simran, meditation is the practice to learn. I don't have to jump on those thoughts. So the first benefit, and it's a benefit that your noisy, your noisy mind becomes clear to you. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You realize, okay, this is what the thought does. But in the first time, you will keep jumping on those thoughts. So when you keep jumping on those thoughts, you will very quickly, even if you're doing Nam Simran, even if your voice is saying a mantra, your inner voice is, is on holiday. Your inner voice is doing something else. So the benefit of that is that you have a mantra. And what happens is every now and then your awareness comes back. And you say, oh, I was supposed to be doing Nam Simran. So you jump off that train and you jump back onto the platform. You stay still. And the Nam Simran is what reminds you. Nam Simran is constantly reminding you that you weren't meant to be on this train. You're on the wrong train. Come back. So as soon as you realize that I'm thinking about something, I'm supposed to be doing Nam Simran, allow that thought to go away, jump off that thought. You let that thought go away and you realize you're back on the train station of me. You're the train station. Your awareness is the train station. Jump off that and stay on the train station by staying on Nam. You bring your awareness back to Nam so that even if more thoughts come along, you say, nope, I'm not going on that thought. Staying on the train station is helped by the fact that you keep your awareness on the mantra itself. Keeping your awareness on the mantra, focusing on the mantra, means that you're focusing on the train station, not allowing every other thought to come along. Meditation is something that has been not understood by the modern world. Have you seen in the modern world, everybody talks about meditation. Everyone says, yeah, I like to do meditation, I like to do yoga, I like to do mindfulness. But what we're seeing now is those things are being done without wisdom. So everybody says they do meditation. But you want to talk about the real deeper meaning of what meditation is trying to do for you. They say, no, 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 I'm just doing meditation to relax. Meditation helps with my stress. Yoga helps with my stress. But yoga, mindfulness and meditation come from a wisdom. So you can't practice them without learning the wisdom as well. You have to learn the wisdom. What is it trying to do? So meditation, yoga, mindfulness are great if they are combined with the Shabad Bichar, with the understanding of what they're trying to do. If you think meditation is just about being stress-free, yes, that's one of the benefits of, of doing any meditation. But it's not the purpose of the meditation. The meditation isn't just for stress management. It's good for stress management, but that's not what it's for. It's to connect you with the oneness. But most people are not willing to go that far. They don't want to connect with any oneness. They want to stay within them, themselves. So rather than just reduce stress, what real Simran is trying to do is reduced self. Reduce sense of self. We don't feel so much of meh anymore. The reason we feel a lot of meh all the time is because in reality, the mind is doing Simran all the time. But it's not doing Nam Simran all the time, it's doing Meh Simran all the time. What happens the first thing when you wake up in the morning? Straight away when you wake up in the morning, all the Meh thoughts start coming. Meh kam karna, meh o kam karna. I need to do this, I need to do that. Does that happen first thing? As soon as you wake up in the morning, so your thoughts keep telling you, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. In fact, the mind is quite useful like that. The purpose of the mind is to remind you of things. I call the mind a personal assistant. It's very useful. It comes and it tells you these are all the things that you need to do straight away. And not only does it tell you what you need to do, it tells you in priority order. 
It tells you first you need to do this. You got some other stuff to do, but this is more important. So as an assistant, it's really useful. But what's happened is we don't let the mind be an assistant. We've made the mind the master. We're supposed to be the boss and the mind is supposed to be the personal assistant, the secretary, just telling you what to do. But we've become the opposite way. We wake up in the morning, the mind tells us what to do and we listen to the mind like it's the boss and we say, yes, boss. Whatever you say, I have to do it. The purpose of Naam Simran is to reshift that balance again. So the mind becomes our servant. We have to become the master of the mind. Manajite. We have to win over the mind. Mind can't be the boss. If mind is the boss, then it's constantly going to be shouting at you. This kind of boss is always shouting in you. You know, you sometimes you get those kind of managers at work. They're always telling you off. And this kind of mind is always giving you work to do, never gives you a break. So do you want this kind of boss? Do you want to be the servant of this mind? Because this mind is the thing that has also given you all the dukkh in your life. As soon as somebody says something bad to you, even if you don't feel very bad, the mind says, oh, I can't believe what that person said to me. It's not you saying it, it's your mind saying it. Oh, can you believe what that person said? I can't believe. That's not the first time they've said that either. So your mind is creating your dukkh. So then the mind has told you something. Look at what that person said or did. And your body is having an emotional response. Your body is now starting to feel emotional pain because the mind has given you an instruction. What if the mind said, look at what that person did, but within you, you say, I don't need to listen to that mind. Because if I listen to you too much, I'm going to start stressing. I'm going to start feeling the emotion of sadness, of stress, of anxiety, of fear. So your dukkh is coming from the mind. But with Naam Simran, the idea is dukh parhar, sukh kar le jai. Get rid of the dukh. Why? Because we're controlling the thing that gives us the dukh, the mind. So these are one of the benefits. Naam Simran is not just to reduce stress, it's to reduce meh. Because the mind is always saying meh, meh, meh. It's doing meh Simran all the time. And by doing Naam, we're replacing the meh with tum. Tuhi, tuhi, tuhi. What we're doing is we're replacing the idea that meh is the most important thing in the mind. Mind is telling you, don't listen to anyone else. Meh is the most important thing. But with Naam, with Shabad, with Tuhi, Tuhi, with you, you as our mantar, we are realizing that Meh isn't the most important thing. This oneness that is inside and outside, that is the most important thing in life. So Naam is reprogramming the mind. If you think about mind as software, this software has got a virus and the virus is called meh, I am, that's the virus. It's polluting our mind, it's polluting our body. Shabad is the antivirus and the way the antivirus works is it deletes the old programming and it puts new programming. We get rid of the meh, which is the manmat, we delete that thinking and we replace it with the new software, the new programming, Gurmat, the Guru's thinking. And Gurmat says, Meh is not the most important thing. Ik is the most important thing. Tuhi, Tuhi, Vaheguru is the most important thing. So that's why Naam is to constantly run in the background because instead of saying Meh, Meh, Meh all the time, we're now reprogramming our mind. Tu, Tu, Tu. So this is some of the things that we're trying to do with Naam Simran. So we're trying to reduce the sense of self. How does Naam help us reduce the sense of self? Naam, as I've understood it, has two real stages. The we use Shabad as not a way of getting something, but as a way of praising. 
the purpose of Shabbat, of Naam, the purpose of saying Vah is we're praising Vaheguru. That's why the most amazing mantra that Guru Nanak Dev Ji has come to this world with is Wow. When I'm teaching this to my children, I'm saying Guru Nanak Dev Ji gave us something called Vah, Vaheguru. And in English, I explain to my children, that's called Wow Simran. Everything that we're doing, Vah. We don't just have to do this Naam Simran sitting down. Everything that we look around us, Vah. Look at the sun, wow. Look at the sky, wow. Look at the birds, wow. Look at nature, wow. Look at humanity, wow. Look at what humans have been able to create, wow. It's not because we're great. We're not saying wow to the tree or to the birds or to the sky. We're saying wow to the one behind it, the one that's created all of this. The energy behind everything, the power, the shakti, behind everything, the kudrat behind it. So I explained to my children that by doing vah, we're doing wow, wow, wow all the time. And it's called wow, Simran. And one of the things that we should be most amazed by is this. Wow, what is this? I explained to my children that no toy that you have moves without you doing something or there some, being some electricity or battery doing something. If you have a toy, it doesn't move on its own. If you have a robot, all the lights don't come on on its own, all the arms and legs don't start moving on its own. It has to have an energy, a battery inside it. What is this robot? It seems to move without a battery. But the truth is there is an energy inside us. And that energy is life energy. Where does that life energy come from? It's pretty amazing if you think about it. What is the difference between you and a dead, dead body? Same arms, same legs, same head, same internal organs, eyes, ears, nose, heart, lungs. What's the difference? The difference between you and a dead body is they are switched off and you are switched on. You're switched on right now. There's something inside you that's switched on. What is it that is switched on? What is that electricity inside us? That is the wonder of Waheguru. We are switched on, but we can't seem to find what is the thing that switches us on. That is the life energy that has been infused into us. Where does that life energy come from? Isn't that something amazing? Isn't that something worth saying? Wow, Vaheguru, that's pretty amazing. And you're right here. You're keeping me alive. You're keeping me going. So when I'm doing Naam Simran, I'm trying personally not to look outside. I'm just amazed by what is inside, let alone what's outside. And when you look outside, look at all the galaxies and the billions of stars and the moons. I'm sure you must have seen these videos on Facebook and YouTube where they show a person and then they zoom out and then they show a country and then they zoom out and then they show the planet and then the moon and then the solar system and then the sun and then all the other solar systems and then all of that's just in one galaxy it zooms out and there's billions of galaxies and then you think wow so Guruji has given us this technique already Vah. when we're doing Vah Guru we're evoking the emotion of wow Every moment is amazing and Sangatji, the biggest blessing is every time you take a breath in. Wow. Even breath, you're breathing. So breath is another important element that the Guru has told us about. Sasa Sasa Simro Gobind. Previously, there used to be the technique that people just used to sit in silence or they used to just focus on a picture or they used to focus on their breath. The Guru was aware of all these different techniques but the Guru says sitting in silence doesn't silence the mind. And the Guru looked at the breath and said, rather than just focusing on the breath, take the breath and put Shabad on top of it. Put a mantra on top of it, put Naam on top of it. That's when it's going to be really effective for you. 
सास सास सिमरो गोबिंद मन अंतर की उत्तर है चिंद द वरीज ऑफ द माइंड स्टार्ट टू डिसअपियर Why do the worries of the mind start to disappear because your focus is not now on the thoughts of the mind your focus is on gobind So we have something else to bring our awareness to So naam is to use va praise and we can even do any mantra that works for you sometimes i encourage that if your mind one thing i find your mind gets bored very easily even if you pick one mantra your mind will get bored very easily that's why i say the next day try a different mantra and if just doing a single word starts to get boring because your mind gets used to things very easily then take a tuk from gurbani you can take any line from gurbani and you can just repeat that line one thing i've enjoyed using is jo tera hukum very useful when you're walking around try once for 24 hours to just say jo tera hukum jo tera hukum jo tera hukum let that be your naam simran and you will notice that even as when you're driving and somebody drives in front of you and cuts you off in traffic and normally your mind will say get angry at that person but a mantra or a shabad like jo tera hukum will say I don't need to listen to you mind I don't need your reaction to be my first reaction Remember your response to the world is your responsibility We like to think that if somebody has made us feel upset it's their responsibility they're at fault But you can't control what they do You cannot control what all the other drivers are doing. You can't control what the whole world is doing. We can't control the weather. We can't control the external and normally we can't control the internal. Our response we can't control it. Whatever our first response is that the the master, the mind, whatever that tells us, we listen to it. We say yes, that's the right response. But as you do more naam simran, you realize that might not be the right response. So you detach yourself from the mind and you think what is the right response? So remember your response if somebody is agitating you you cannot control them but you can control your response. Your response is your responsibility. You can choose. So you can't choose that the other person said something mean to you but you can choose and take responsibility for the fact that you got angry or you got upset. That's your choice. and you only know that when you start doing naam simran and meditation you can start realizing the mind has a first response that doesn't have to be my first response so naam simran uses praise as a way to say wah tu hi tu hi and your first response should be this is wahiguru as well this is wahiguru this is wahiguru this is wahiguru and this is wahiguru then you won't be able to say i am angry at you you'll say wahiguru has said something to wahiguru and wahiguru is okay with it sometimes you might even say wahiguru is okay with it but the mind is agitated because you've created a distinction so we use praise so the first i said naam has two steps the first step of naam simran a naam is namo praise we look at jab sahib it says namo 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 all the time namo means i praise you i bow down to you that's the first bit of naam simran that everything that you say everything that you see you say i bow down to you i bow down to you i bow down to you because you are wahiguru but don't make a duality that wahiguru is outside and not inside bow the bowing should also be internal When the bowing goes internal naam goes to the second phase where everything becomes you you wahiguru 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 and this becomes wahiguru naam has gone into the second stage naam has gone from namo to naam naam starts with namo praise and ends with naam there is no me there is only you कबीर तू तू करता 
tu hua kabir ji tells us this process of naam simran by doing tu hi tu hi tu hi i became that tu hi mujh mein raha na hu nothing was left of me jab aapa par ka mit gaya jat dekho tat tu when the the barrier the curtain between me and everything else was destroyed then everywhere i saw i saw you including me so it's not then i can see god it is god can see god waheguru is looking at waheguru there is no me left that is the end of naam simran that is where naam simran is the destination of naam simran naam simran is the technique and naam simran is the de- destination naam is the destination as well so naam starts with namo praise and it ends with name no me how do we do this as i start wrapping up towards the end of this talk now how do we do this we do this without any desires if you're doing naam simran with some desire even the desire i want to find god you will not find god if you're saying i'm doing naam simran come on god remember i said that normally we do naam simran as god calling come on waheguru come on waheguru come on waheguru that's what we do with naam simran if you're saying i'm waiting for you i'm waiting for you i'm waiting for you who simran are you really doing if you're saying i am waiting for god i am waiting for god i am waiting for god then what you're really saying is i am i am i am the man hasn't gone and as long as there is a man god is not outside god is not waiting to come from the outside into you god is inside waiting to come out god is already here dur nahi mero prab pyara god is not far away guru ji is saying but why don't we know it dur nahi mero prab pyara sat gur bachan mero man manya har paaye pran adhara when my mind began to learn and accept the sat gur bachan the words of the guru then i found god as the energy of my own life har paaye pran adhara not even the energy of life the one supporting the energy of my life the adhar of my pran this is what is coming from guru granth sahib ji dur nahi mero prab pyara stop making naam simran god calling come on god you're far away you need to come near me Guru ji is explaining God is already inside you. So we must do it without expectations. Because expectation means I want. Naam Simran is not I want. Naam Simran starts with namo, I surrender. I give. So Naam Simran is take, not give. it is the process of asking the guru to take me take the mare away from me why cuz homme nave nal virodh hai the me is the rival of naam so if you're doing naam simran with a me i am finding god i'm waiting for god i'm looking for god then there is an i am then you're not doing naam simran because homme nave nal virodh hai the i am is the opposite of naam simran i am is the rival of naam simran that means naam is to defeat the i am not to call god get rid of the i am if i am is finding is finding god if i am is looking for god when you get rid of the i am then god is left god becomes pargat So Naam Simran is the process of not calling God but realizing the God that is already sitting inside you. And the way you do it is you don't have any expectation. So in your Naam Simran don't even have the expectation I'm waiting for something to happen. No. Let go of that as well. Let go of the I'm waiting for something to happen and I'll tell you how easy this is. 
When you go to the beach and you lie in the sun and you're enjoying the nice weather, you're not saying, I'm waiting for something to happen. You're not waiting for anything, you're just enjoying the moment. Sunbathing. I don't know if you do that here, it's so hot. Certainly in England, as soon as the sun comes out, everybody's out in the garden, t-shirt comes off, everything is off and you're just enjoying the one minute of sunshine that you get. But in that, you're not saying, I'm waiting for something to happen. You're just enjoying the moment. In Nam Simran, stop waiting for something to happen. Enjoy being within yourself because the God is already there. Don't say, where is the God? I'm looking for God because then there's still I'm, I am. So in Nam Simran, you have to get comfortable with the idea, I'm not waiting for anything. Just sit on the platform, sit on the train station, and slowly, slowly you will realize this is God. Not the mind, this is God. This itself, this prana, this life energy, that which is behind it, everything is God. And the realization should come, oh, I get it. This is actually God. The very experience of being here, the aliveness isn't you, it's not your jyot that's inside you. It's God's jyot, sabme jyot, jyot hai soe. It's God's energy inside you. The body is not yours, you didn't make this body either. God made this body. What, what choice did you have in this body? You didn't make it. So this body, this mind, this experience of self, this atma is the paramatma. So in Nam Simran, have no expectations. Let go of yourself. Let go of the one doing the Nam Simran. Because if you're even holding on to the small delusion that I am doing Nam Simran, the I am is still there. Even if you hold on to think, look how great I am that I'm sitting here and doing Nam Simran. The I am is still there. The I am has to be let go. You almost have to set yourself free so that there's no I am left. All that is left is Tuhi, Tuhi, Tuhi. So Waheguru grows and becomes Pargat inside you when the mind lets go. So my final thing that I want to say about Nam Simran is unlike meditation, Nam Simran is not restricted to any pose or any position or any time of day. Yes, there is Amrit Villa and it's certainly recommended that you do it at that time because the mind has a lot more free time. If you wake up at six o'clock in the morning, your mind is already telling you what you need to do for the day. If you wake up at three o'clock in the morning, you'll realize I don't need to think about those things. It's quiet. The outside world is quiet and I have plenty of time. Do your Nam Simran at three o'clock. But the Gurmat recommendation is don't stop after Amrit Villa. Nam Simran is Art Pahar, 24 hours a day. So that means Nam Simran can be done sitting down, but it should also be done. Uthat, Bethat, Sovat, Jagat, E Man, Tujay Chitari. 24 hours a day while you're standing, while you're walking around, while you're eating, while you're talking to other people, there has to be this understanding inside you that Nam is the oneness. Everything is the oneness. God is eating God. God is talking to God. God is driving the car. God is hungry. God is tired. So Guru has given us 24 hours Nam Simran. But there is value in sitting and doing it. I like to call this the concentrated Nam Simran, when you're not having to think about anything else. It's hard when you're walking around, your mind can get distracted all the time. It's hard to walk around and do Nam Simran because then it'll be like, oh, there's my friend. Oh, there's a person I don't like. Oh, there's some bananas, I need to pick some up on the way home. You see, your mind can get easily distracted. So this is like a concentrated version. It allows you to do it without too many other distractions.